Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish. On today's video, we're going to talk about the connected scatter plot. And the connected scatter plot is a great way to show how correlations change over time. So imagine having two line charts side by side, or even the dreaded dual axis line chart. How do you get your reader to understand how these two time series work together or move together over time? Well, Steve Franconeri from Northwestern University, who has done a lot of research on the connected scatter plot, is going to explain in today's video. Hi, this is Steve Franconeri from Northwestern University. I teach in the Department of Psychology, Design Engineering, and also the Kellogg School of Business. I spend a lot of time thinking about the psychology of data visualization, and I'd love to show you one of my favorite visualization formats. I learned about this format from the work of Hannah Fairfield and Amanda Cox at the New York Times. Here's one of the stories from Amanda Cox. It's oil's roller coaster ride. You can see that we have two sets of time series data, the price of oil over time and consumption of oil over time. And if you'd like to inspect the trends in either one of these types of data alone, where's the peaks, where are the valleys, what are the trends, a line graph is a perfect format. But if you'd like to get a sense of the relationships between these two lines, where's price going up but consumption going down? Where's consumption flat but oil dropping? Where are the parts where you have positive or negative correlations between these two lines? It's a little harder to see here. So they used a format that's commonly used by economists and engineers to be able to look more closely and more effectively at patterns, at relationships between these two sets of lines. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to convert these data into a scatter plot. Note that for the year 1980, there's both a price and a consumption level for oil. So we could plot that dot here. And we could plot the same dot for 1990 and for 2000. Now it's easier to see the relationships between these points. Look at 1980, price was high, but consumption was low. Look at 2000, consumption was high, but price was low. The problem is that we've now lost time. Uh, it's, you can read time in the years labeled next to the dots, but it'd be nice to have a visual annotation of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect these scatter plot points with a line indicating time. That's exactly what they're doing. On the lower left, we have the first time point, and on the upper right, we have the final time point. Now, looking at this, initially, it's a little bit weird. Uh, it looks like a line graph, but it's not. It's a scatter plot, and it seems to violate some of the conventions that we're used to for line graphs. So it tends to go backwards in some spots. In fact, there's a loop. The line crosses itself. We know from high school algebra class that this is not allowed. A line cannot go backwards or cross itself. And we have to remind ourselves it's not a line graph. It's a connected scatter plot. So as you look at this, you can see relationships a little more easily in some ways. So if we look at the beginning of the line where oil consumption is flat, that actually means that oil consumption is going up as we move to the right, and then price of oil is not changing. And then you get this little L junction here where suddenly oil consumption stops rising and the price of oil starts rising. So the benefit of this kind of chart is that that relationship turns into a little shape you can see an L shape that indicates that one metric was rising and the other was not, and then that relationship reversed. And that is a more efficient way of telling high level patterns from uh, two sets of data like this. But the visualization can do some really funny stuff. There's that loop up there. Take a moment to think what that means. What does it mean when there's a little roller coaster loop in, uh, in a connected scatter plot like this? This took me a while to figure out. I actually had to play with some of these to work it out in my own brain but it's a time-delayed correlation. So the first bit of that loop, it's the same as what we just discussed for, for the, the L shape at the bottom. Consumption is going up, but the price is not. And then that relationship reverses, where now price is going up, but consumption is not. So it's the same rise, but it happens to the price of oil later than it did to consumption. And then on the upper right of that loop, that pattern starts to reverse. Now price stops increasing, but consumption starts going down. And then sometime later, the price starts going down and consumption is static. So the same trend, the same pattern is happening to both, the same pattern of ups and downs. It's just that price seems to have those trends happen later. So this is a, a neat way of looking for time delayed relationships between variables like this. And economists use this all the time. So if you have data on unemployment rates, but also job openings, if you open a bunch of jobs, you're not going to decrease unemployment rate immediately because it takes time for people to fill those jobs. And then once those jobs start filling, eventually unemployment rate will start going down, and then the number of job openings will start going down. 
So economists will use similar connected scatter plots to look at these time delayed relationships between two variables. And there's some nice work at the New York Times, again from Amanda Cox, showing these kinds of relationships. Engineers also use connected scatter plots in a sense when they look at oscilloscopes. Here, an engineer is looking at two variables, one plotted on X and one plotted on Y, and then time is connecting them. And engineers get used to looking for particular kinds of shapes and patterns that indicate important properties of whatever system that they're studying. If you're interested in connected scatter plots, we've done a study on this in the lab, collaborating with Steve Harose and Robert Kosara. And if you go to the website on the top, you can download a paper where we show people exactly the same data, either in line graphs, that's the top right example, or the same data in a connected scatter plot, that's the bottom right example, and look at the different kinds of patterns that you can pull from each one, and the different kinds of patterns that you tend to pull from each one. Different kinds of features pop out in each of these cases. The other neat part about this website is that Steve Harrow set up a nice JavaScript demonstration where you can actually move the points in a connected scatter plot or its equivalent line graph and see those same points move in the other kind of graph type. This really helped me work out in my own head how these graph types are related, this dynamic interaction. One of my favorite examples of, connect, of a connected scatter plot is from one of my other data communication heroes, uh, the late Hans Rosling. Rosling would show countries as dots in a scatter plot, and we'd have some metric like GDP on the x-axis, or maybe life expectancy on the y-axis. And one of Rosling's points is that the world is getting better. If you look at the data, um, that, that countries are moving up in uh, health and uh, economic prosperity. So he'd use visualizations like these, where he'd map two metrics to the x and y axis, and then he'd show something like population as the size of the bubble, as I have here in the real data in the background, and then he'd use color for some other variable, like in this case it was continent. I'm using color in my visualization to show CO2 emissions of different countries. The neat part is that once he gets you used to this kind of chart, in later sections of this video that you can see at the link below, he'll actually leave trails. As the countries move throughout the scatter plot, they'll leave a trail so you can see where they've been and project where they're going. And that makes this visualization effectively into a connected scatter plot. It's the same idea where you're plotting two variables for each dot over time, and you're seeing the progression of each dot. And what Rosling adds is size and color to each one of these also allowing you to see two more metrics for each country. If you check out this chart chooser that's available at the link above, and you zoom into the bottom right, these kinds of connected scatter plots and Rosling scatter plots hold a special place in our, our taxonomy of ways to show complex data sets, uh, data sets where you have two to four metrics that you want to get across to an observer's eyes. They hold a special place on the bottom right. So if I just highlight this one on the bottom, the Rosling comment, this is the equivalent of what you just saw Hans Rosling demonstrating. You can imagine using this for something like a company where you have sets of clients in different states or countries, and you can plot uh, your sales or revenue from those clients along the x-axis, the profit that you brought back along the y-axis, and then the number of clients in that state or country as the size of these objects. And you still have color to play with. You could put other, some other sentiment um, um, about the, that, that company or state or country in the color um, of, those, of those bubbles. You can imagine running a research study and you have participants in the study and you're giving them some, some drug or treatment. And along the x-axis, you could put the dosage. In the y-axis, you could have the outcome. How are they doing? And then you could have the size of the bubble maybe indicate their initial risk factors coming into the study. The neat thing about this is that once you make this into a connected scatter plot, once you add these lines, you can show that over time, so these are two samples now for each patient group, the, the bubble being the latest sample and the end of the little lollipop line being the previous sample, you can now tell that it looks like for those higher risk patients, the bigger bubbles on the right, looks like they're, we're lowering their dosage, but you know what? And you know what? Their outcomes are about the same. So maybe we can get away with a lower dosage. But weirdly, for those patients on the left side with the smaller bubbles, with the lower risk factors, we're lowering their dosage and their outcomes are getting worse. Hmm, counterintuitive. We should do something about that. So overall, the connected scatter plot is a great way to get across multiple variables that change over time. You can look at their relationships just like you could in a scatter plot. And I think that adding size, and color to those little little dots on the scatter plot, just like Hans Rosling did, can give you two additional variables 
where you can look at two new bits of information. These are incredibly powerful for analytics. You can look at four variables at once and then change in two of them by the spatial motion of the dots or by the, the, the direction that those little lollipops point in. And it's also great for communication because you can show all this information in a fairly intuitive way. You need to explain it a little bit, but as complex multidimensional data visualizations go, it's pretty intuitive. So hope you give it a try and check out the links accompanying this video for uh, tutorials on how to make these things and links to the research around them. Good luck. And thanks to Steve for that great summary of the connected scatter plot. I do recommend you check out his work and his research and check out the various web pages that he mentioned in his video and that are linked below in the show notes. So until next time, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks for watching.